Here we've got a related rates problem that says that a pump fills a trough with water at a rate of three cubic feet every minute. So they, they tell us something about the rate. So this is a, a related rates problem. And it asks us how fast is the water level rising when the water is two feet deep. So depending on how fast this water comes into the trough, that's going to influence how fast the water level rises, obviously. So they want to know how fast is that water level rising when the depth is, is two feet. So let's review just real briefly how we solve related rates problems. Uh, step one, we draw a picture if one's not provided that it actually was here. So um, we can just use uh, the picture that we already have. Uh, step number two, find an algebra equation relating all information, not counting the rates. The rates will come later. Um, so when I when I look at this, some things that catch my eye that uh, I know I'll use and some things I know I won't use is um, I, I think the dimensions of the trough would be important. I see things like uh, volume, you know, cubic feet, that, that sounds important. But when I see things like three cubic feet per minute, that rate, I don't think I'll be using that quite yet. So um, I think we're, our main formula here is going to be the volume of water in this trough um, based off of what, what they're telling us here. So our static equation will be V equals, and then we have to think, okay, what's the volume of water in this thing? Well, I picked this example on purpose because we have lots of volume problems, uh, but s sometimes they're nice geometric shapes like uh, spheres or, uh, you know, where we have a nice formula like four thirds pi r cubed that most of us know, or like a box where we talk about volume, length times width times height. But this is kind of, kind of an obscure shape. And so th that's why I actually chose this one. Um, in general, if you want to find the, uh, the volume of something, and, and I am going off on a little bit of a, a tangent here, but I'll, I'll get back to the problem in a minute. If you want to find the volume of a three dimensional solid like this that has consistent cross sections like this box does then what you do is you take the area of one of the faces like length times width so that that would give you the the area of just one of these faces right here and then you multiply it times its height or by its third dimension so that's why the volume of a box is length times width times height length times width is the area of one of the faces times the height uh, or you could do length times height and then multiply by the width or, or so on and so forth. So we're actually going to do something here uh, very similar to the same thing. So if you look at this um, trough right here, look at the water, we see that one of the faces is, is a triangle like this, right, with a, a certain height that's changing, right, a certain height, and uh, it's got a base, Right. If you flip it upside down, there's the base, but I know it's on the top, but I mean, you could flip it around if you wanted to. And so we know that the area, the area that is of a triangle is one half base times height. So our volume, our volume formula will be one half base of the uh, triangle times the height. And then the is consistently that area, that same cross section for the entire 10 feet. Okay. So V equals 10 times a half is five B times H. Okay. Um, now you might look at this and say, well, Devin, can we just substitute three and three for the base and the height? Unfortunately, no, because the, that's the, of the entire trough. That's not the water level. The water level is going to be changing. The water level will rise. So the base and the height will grow as, uh, as the time, as time moves on. Now we can actually use this to our advantage though. This three and three you'll notice right here. Notice that, um, these are similar triangles in any triangle that you draw like this, whether it be three feet across and three feet deep. Um, or any, I guess, smaller triangle inside of that, these will all be similar triangles. They all have the same ratio or proportions of their edges. So actually the, the base and the height are actually one and the same. Uh, three and three, two and two, one and one, uh, does, doesn't really matter. So we can actually reduce this down to either the volume equals five B squared, because base times base, 
or 5h squared, h times h. Now we have to make a decision on which one. Now this is where I'm going to look at the question. They're asking me about how fast the water level is rising. That sounds more like the h instead of the, the b. So I think I'll write this as v equals 5h squared. So if you give me the depth of the water, the, the, or I guess we'll call it the height of the water, I can tell you the volume of water in the trough, right? Um, that's your static still equation. Every one of these problems has one. I found an algebra, equ algebra equation relating all the information. So I drew my picture, got my algebra equation. Problem is, is that there's no motion yet. That's for a particular water depth. Um, but I have a pump that's filling it up. So to see the rate, to see the movement, now we need a derivative. And for related rates problems, we always differentiate with respect to time. So that it's cubic feet per minute or uh, miles per hour, or it's always something per time unit. So derivative of V with respect to T would be dv dt. The derivative of 5h squared would be 10h, but due to implicit differentiation um, of taking the derivative of an h with respect to t, which is a different variable, you leave a residue of dh dt. Okay, So there's where my rates are. Um, I, I took the derivative there. All right, now I took the derivative with respect to time t. Uh, now I have to plug in the information that they give me. Um, they tell me quite a few things. Um, for instance, the pump fills the trough at a rate of three cubic feet per minute. That's change in volume per minute. So that's going to be the dv dt, change in volume over change in time. Three cubic feet every minute equals 10 blank blank. All right, so what's the H? Well, it says, how fast is the water level rising when the water is two feet deep, two feet deep? That sounds like H. And then they say the question, how fast? Now, fast is another word for rate, so that's a little key word. When you hear the word fast or slow or rate of change, they're talking about one of the D something DTs. Um, so they're saying, how fast is the water level uh, rising? Well, that sounds like dh dt. And uh, I'm sorry, I should have filled in actually what that h was. They told us. Sorry, there should have been two. Okay, there you go. Um, this is the guy we're looking for, dh dt. So quick little algebra, dh dt, change in height over change in time, would be 3 divided by uh, 20, 2 times um, 10 is 20, 3 over 20, uh, 3 over 20 what? Um, it looks like our units are in feet and minutes. So 3 twentieths of a foot every minute. Um, if you wanted to, uh, it would not be very difficult to change that to inches per minute, um, being that that's very, very small. It's growing very, or filling up very slowly. And you can kind of tell, uh, once this thing is two um, feet deep of water and you're pumping water in, uh, the water level is not going to rise super, super fast. Uh, especially this doesn't sound like it's a very, very fast flowing pump into the trough either. So this answer makes, makes very good sense. Um, so the rate of change in the water level would be 3 twentieths of a foot every minute. All right. Now, uh, in closing, um, I just want to kind of zoom out and look at a big picture again. Related rates problems. All of these are set up the same way. If you watch some of my other related rates examples, you'll see the exact same setup. You draw a picture. You find some sort of static equation that relates all the variables in, in your formula in your picture. There's no motion there. Um, it's static. It's still. It's unchanging. So you differentiate with respect to time to see the motion to see the rates, to see movement. They will give you, or you will be able to find everything in the formula. You'll be able to plug in everything in that derivative formula, except for the one guy that you're looking for. I promise you, um, either it will be straight out provided, or you'll have to do a little scratch work, but you'll be able to find it. And then you circle whoever it is you're looking for. And then once you've got your information plugged in, you solve for it.